Good morning, uh, Alberta, or good afternoon, depending on what time zone you are joining us uh, from today. My name is Ann Snowden. I am absolutely honoured uh, to join what has been just an incredible uh, group of speakers in this digital summit. Uh, my warmest congratulations to Laura Kilcrease and her team uh, for putting on such a flawless event. And an event at a time, I would suggest, is incredibly needed. So what I'd like to begin with is what we've heard some uh, number of um, ideas about today, and that is COVID-19. When you look back and reflect on your career, as some of us may have done, um, there are one or two events that often you look back and think it really changed the world. Certainly 9-11 was one of those that changed forever how we travel and a number of events and things at, at, at borders. I would suggest that COVID-19 is one of those events that we will reflect on, look back, and really think about how it changed the world of healthcare. Its scope and scale as a public health emergency is beyond what I think any of us imagined. It really shifted very dramatically. We've heard a lot about that with some of the speakers today. How health systems are engaging uh, our, the communities they serve, the populations they strive to really support in terms of their health wellness, and really shone a very bright light on some critical dimensions of health systems that are most likely needing to change, and that may be supply chain capacity to make sure every citizen and health team have those protective products they need, understand how to use them and how to stay safe, and the number of workforce challenges unfolding really right before our eyes. We have an opportunity uh, in front of us right now, right today. We've heard many important ideas to leverage that opportunity. And that is to think about the ways we can take the lessons learned, the very critical events of COVID-19 that continue to unfold, and rethink how we transform healthcare, healthcare delivery in such a way that we meet the needs and we support people to stay healthy and well within the unique contexts and circumstances uh, of their lives. So I really want to speak to some of those items today on how digital health engages and supports the health of communities, learning again from what we're seeing unfold in this pandemic. So thinking about that pandemic, just how have health systems very quickly had to mobilize uh, citizen engagement? There is country after country. We all watch this unfold, starting in China, moving right across Europe and into North America. The very profound impact this pandemic has had on the individual lives of day-to-day -day, day -day lives of virtually every global citizen. What we also saw, and I uh, would suggest we need to think more about, is how did health systems engage and support our communities? as this pandemic unfolds and as it continues to unfold. When you think about it, we've heard a little bit today about how do we inform the public? What kinds of information do they need? Most of our information today comes from social media, public press conferences, presentations by our many, many very talented public health leaders. And yet all of us live in very digital societies. When we um, shop online, we do all our travel online, all our banking online, virtually every business sector is digitally part of the digital societies we live in, except perhaps the, to the same degree, of course, is our health system. Why is that? And what are some of those opportunities to change that? Which I think is really one of the ways we leverage the transformative changes health system can now achieve. Let's think about consumer culture. One size doesn't fit all. Although when you really look at how our health systems have been structured, what incredible work they achieve, which is all very, very important, it tends to lean towards a one size fits all approach in the pandemic. Think about the directives, social isolation, wearing masks, distancing yourself so that you reduce your risk for transmission of the virus. But think of the differential impact of those kinds of direction on different communities. Our seniors, either living alone or living in long-term care, who now must stay in their rooms or can't be visiting and spend time and get the support at that social interaction with families. Think of our teenagers, our, our young adults out in the workforce, 
Think of our, our many families in, in isolated communities. One size doesn't fit all of those groups. And we're seeing differential responses, abilities to engage, and ability to really make decisions to whether they actually comply with uh, these, these um, pandemic directives. Now, public health directives are critically important, of course, to reducing transmission of the virus, reducing the risk that people will become ill, and enabling the capacity of health systems to care for people when and, for, and if they do get sick. The success of our pandemic response actually depends on the ability and the willingness, perhaps, of our communities to engage, to follow those rules, to comply. I would suggest they may also depend on the ability of our communities and our very special and unique populations in each community to adapt to those directives, and but still maintain that social uh, dis, that social engagement, maybe online versus in person, or still find those ways of quality of life. We're seeing that uh, often on social media. What I think we have an opportunity for now in the health system is to mobilize and shift from that culture of striving for compliance and move towards a culture striving for collaboration. How do we help those unique um, groups within our communities and our populations to stay safe, be healthy and well, but not compromise very, very important things like dis personal decisions for their quality of life and their ability uh, to move through some pretty challenging times that we're seeing. So this one size fits all has been a long and deep focus of our health systems, primarily for very good reason. Disease management pathways informed by evidence. We know that when we engage in certain health behaviors, we get to very important health outcomes. I think now is the time to rethink how do we build on those disease management pathways? How do we better understand the unique life circumstances of the communities our health system serve and tailor, adapt, and collaborate with those communities to support and enable their health at a much greater level? Now, let me switch gears slightly and talk about health workforce. Health workforce is a community. Uh, we often don't think of it, and sometimes I'm, and we've certainly seen impressive community response um, who have realized just how incredible the work of our health workforce is actually uh, achieving in under an absolutely incredible circumstances. I'm an ICU nurse uh, originally by training. I can't even imagine what my colleagues in those settings are, are, are challenged by. But look at some data out of Blue Cross Blue Shield in the U.S. on the health of our workforce. And do we really understand those strategies and the abilities to support the health of a workforce that is yet so critical to the, li to the life, health, and wellness of virtually every global population? If you look at this data, you can see a very major decline in health at the age of 27, and this is focused on millennials. Blue Cross Blue Shield looked at what's our future workforce, what kinds of ways can we be supporting their health and workforce. And here we see that, in fact, millennials, apologies, have a very different health profile than either the Gen X group before them, and certainly different again from the baby boomers before that. We see a double digit increase in the prevalence of eight out of 10 chronic health conditions since 2014. Our older millennials and the 34 and 36 year olds have higher prevalence rates for nearly all of those top 10 conditions than their Generation X cohort that, that uh, uh, is before them. And millennial women have 20% higher prevalence of top 10 conditions compared to their male co cohort in this population, mostly contributed by major depression, high rates of type 2 diabetes. So an, another community uh, and health of that very critical community, in my mind, it turns our attention to the health workforce. If our millennial population is in fact, and this data would suggest as a very large study, significantly challenged by health uh, conditions, then how and where do our health systems now need to turn very clear attention to supporting and enabling our health workforce or our health workforce to be healthy, well, work in high quality 
um, work environments that support them to do the incredible and amazing uh, work that they've, um, they deliver every day um, to the support of the health of our population. <coughs> Excuse me. And we've heard quite a bit today about the rapid emergence of virtual care. Virtual care is incredibly uh, important. We've been talking about virtual care in health systems for decades. And many health systems, in fact, did start uh, down the road of virtual care before the pandemic. What's involved very quickly, though, is just how central virtual care now becomes when in-person care is no longer possible or deemed safe in terms of risk of virus. Here's the catch, though. How do we know what virtual care is achieving for whom? We've just talked about one size doesn't fit all. There isn't going to be one virtual care strategy, whether it's an online tool, a smartphone application, a uh, remote monitoring uh, system, that's going to meet the needs of every uh, population segment or every community that a health system serves. And understanding much more clearly, much more accurately, what virtual care achieves for whom, under what conditions uh, it achieves best outcomes, and how does that now become a source of learning to advance and help health systems and the way we're structuring uh, care delivery models to make sure that they are in fact achieving value and they are supporting the health and wellness of our communities. Digital health in my mind is not simply digitizing today's care delivery. Digital health is about transforming care delivery to move to where people are, where they need health uh, and support and wellness to be and leveraging digital tools to make that possible. So let me share a little bit more about what I mean by transforming care delivery, not simply digitizing uh, today. D digital health, according to the Health Information Management System Society, all we often known for many of you as HIMSS, is taking a much different path than health uh, we think of in traditional health systems. They define digital health as connecting and empowering people and populations to manage their health and wellness, augmented and supported by highly accessible, flexible provider teams working within digitally interoperable, digitally enabled care environments. This is a complete shift in healthcare, not just from when you become diagnosed with a health challenge and we work with teams, whether what, regardless of what that challenge is, to recover, to manage that health. This is shifting now to building on our disease management focus, pathway focus towards how do we now help people help themselves stay healthy and well by connecting, empowering them. We heard earlier about transparency and trust. This is just one dimension that digital health from this lens um, may be able to achieve for our communities. What do we mean by digital health? This is a bit of a, the building blocks. So by all means, it must have a very strong governance and very strong and supportive workforce able to deliver care within these new digital environments. That is not a small requirement. Governance includes privacy, security, transparency. All of those things contribute to trust and our trust in the communities that our health systems will be there when we need them to be there. Interoperability is simply the democratization of data. Can I, as a patient, get access to all of my health data when I need it? Because I need that data to make decisions. But it's not just about data. We have a massive amounts of data in healthcare. What we may not have are the analytics tools to transition that data into knowledge, into insights for our patients, our communities. That builds health literacy. That helps us understand our health and wellness. What are those indicators that I need to pay attention to to do very well and make good decisions to continue my progress? What are the indicators that would suggest, gee, you know, I may not be making the progress I should be and I need to change and or engage with my provider teams to help me do better. When these building blocks come together, that's when we are able to meaningfully connect to the communities health systems serve enable people to manage their health and wellness, define their health and wellness goals from within the very unique um, situations, conditions of their lives. We saw a very troubling challenge in COVID-19. Some group, population groups have vastly different outcomes than other population groups. 
So African Americans, African Canadians did not have as terrific an outcome of COVID as their Caucasian uh, counterparts. We need to understand that. We need to mobilize data much, much earlier to start to understand those differences and then zero in on reducing risk much earlier, much more proactively, again, driving towards keeping people healthy and well. What are some of the features more specifically if you were working or you were a patient in a digitally enabled uh, ecosystem? It would be very person enabled. What does that mean? You have the choice of the digital tools that you want to use that you define your health goals that have those digital analytics that inform your progress. Am I moving towards the goals I was hoping to or am I not and how might I change and my behaviors or some of my therapies in order to ensure I continue to pro progress. They're proactive. They don't wait for challenges or risks to unfold. They identify them early and that's all about prevention. Preventing transmission of this virus is critical in this pandemic and continues to be. How do we mobilize analytics right in the palm of our hand to proactively identify other risks that we may be, uh, may be ahead for us so it'll cue us to think about how we can shift, make decisions to reduce those risks. And it's also about population health. This is not a, as we've talked about, it's not a one size fits all. The way we need to think about engaging and working with our millennials to support health and wellness is not gonna be the same as our boomer baby boomers, as our seniors in whatever home setting they may be working and even our young families, children, moms at home, online working and trying to navigate online learning uh, with their children. There are important dimensions here that are personalized, they're proactive, they focus on keeping people healthy and well, and they look at what are the outcomes we're seeing in population health segments to make sure we understand, are we achieving the best possible outcomes with all of the various populations we serve? And if not, how do we tailor and personalize care delivery to ensure that, that we do? Part of that involves very significant digital tools, but it's not just about the digital tools. It's about what make those digital tools make possible for people to achieve. Those analytics tools now allow me to pro track my progress to health goals that are meaningful to me. They may be informed by clinical pathways, but they absolutely start and stop with my decisions, what I want to achieve, how I want to achieve it, and maybe even how I need to achieve it in the community or the population I happen to live in. They cue me, they help me identify. You think about in retail, Amazon tells me what greatest books that I might be interested in because it already knows the ones I would tend to find very interesting and helpful. Think about that in the health context. Think about identifying, gee, these are some possible opportunities that you can exceed your health goals or here are some risks or ways to think about how to mitigate any challenges that may be oncoming. The other thing about digital, uh, digitally enabled health systems is it's outcomes driven. It's not about compliance on fitting along a pathway. This is about, are you achieving the outcomes you want to achieve within those environments, those unique life circumstances and those communities that you happen to live in? It is not, not a one size fits all, and it shifts towards progressing along a path, not along a pathway, but towards achieving outcomes that are meaningful uh, to every individual. So what does that mean? That means we health systems, we really need to rethink what we call patient engagement. Sometimes we call it patient satisfaction, sometimes patient activation, sometimes engagement, but really it's health systems need to move from where we are, I think today, and we heard about that uh, with previous presentations around our access to our health data, our health records, all really important. But that's just access to data. The question is, what do we do with that? We move it forward to adopting digital tools that help us make sense of that data, help us inform our decisions using analytics tools that even flag, are we at risk for not achieving goals or at risk for something that we hadn't thought of or not. So it's much more informational and it's much more personalized to the unique individual circumstances of every person. But it takes one step further and that is dynamic engagement and partnership 
with health teams who are working alongside every individual, making sure that they have available to them all the necessary information. And more importantly, they understand the meaning of that information. One earlier speaker mentioned that it's not about taking all of that data. It's zeroing in on what I need to know, when I need to know it proactively, and having the confidence and the support of my health providers to help me make very informed decisions that are personalized to me. That's when we get person empowerment and we move beyond simply sharing information to empowering people to stay healthy and well. What that also means is our decisions start to change in health systems more broadly. Today, our decisions more than often than not react and respond. We have massive amounts of data, the EMR systems, the digital infrastructure, cleans that data, data, creates those reports, flows reports to decision makers, whether that's our senior team, our CEOs, our boards, our, our senior our clinicians. They react and respond and they do the absolute best to make sure every individual gets the care they need. In a digitally enabled health system, it takes it a step further. It understands the patterns in that data. This is where the maturing learning, the artificial intelligence tools come in. It identifies predictive risks. It looks at the historical pattern of patients just like me for the last five years, 10 years, or in similar communities. And it identifies what has worked well for them. And it considers those kinds of predictive uh, outcomes to inform decisions now that are proactive and predict what may unfold and to mitigate the risks of negative outcomes unfolding. So we are really moving towards a prescriptive, uh, act actionable uh, digital infrastructure and moving away from what today is a bit more predominant of reacting and responding. Not that we want to wait for people to get ill, but that is the, the way our system is structured today. You come into your clinical team, you're diagnosed, you're your care delivery um, is, is executed uh, in very, very significant and important ways. But imagine if we knew today those top 5% of every community, they're at greatest risk during a time like a pandemic or doing a post-pandemic where economic impact is going to be pretty significant. That's where we are moving towards and that's where we have digital infrastructure and tools to rethink how decisions are made informed by data driving towards outcomes that optimize health and wellness. What does that also mean? It also means redefining when we think of value. When we think of value, we want to make sure that every citizen has access to the best possible health care. But value is taking on a much broader context, and we've been seeing that in Technicolor in this pandemic. It's about confidence and trust. We are seeing constant changes in how this pandemic is unfolding. It's the nature of pandemics. But are we really connecting in the unique ways we need to be connecting with our communities? Possibly not. This, this illustration talks about the difference between equality. Does everybody have access to it versus equity? Is everyone able to achieve those same outcomes, but may need to achieve them following different paths, different strategic uh, models of of care delivery. So care personalized to people and populations is enabled by digital infrastructure that moves us from where we are today, that one size fits all, everyone do our best to get to the outcomes that we know are possible to achieve to a one size fits on, one size fits one, and really considers the uniqueness of the individuals and the communities we're serving and the very unique life circumstances um, based in each of those communities. What is the future? The future is about learning health systems. What we're really getting at here is a very data-driven, outcomes-focused health system that understands best what's working for which group of our patients' communities, how are we achieving best outcomes for those populations, looking for the populations who may not be achieving those best outcomes, and then very, very proactively shifting care delivery models to ensure that every community, regardless of what circumstances and situation those communities are operating in, have the opportunity to achieve best outcomes. The only way that is possible 
is if our digital infrastructure can help our, our teams to understand what outcomes are we achieving, how now do we, how do those outcomes inform the design and scalability of solutions to offer those very same best outcomes, regardless of who you are, where you might live, what community, what um, significant or, or less significant challenges those communities may be facing. And that's a learning health system, a system able to mobilize data and track in near real time, what are we delivering in terms of care? How is that care achieving value? From whose perspective? Community being a critical one, individuals even more uh, critical, and how do we optimize and ensure that every individual has opportunities to achieve those best outcomes? So we're on the end, a very interesting time. Don Berwick uh, published a paper earlier this year and I, I leave this with you. Fate will not create the new normal, but our choices will. What we have seen in communities and their remarkable resilience, uh, the remarkable agility actually of health systems to pivot and shift at a time of great uncertainty and very, very significant challenges this pandemic is presenting to us um, has shown us that we can learn and speed of learning and change is probably faster than it's ever been and should be and can be more inclusive than it's ever been. And that would be motivated and enabled much more quickly even with greater advancement of our digital infrastructure. The value of standards is something we have, we have long uh, focused on to reduce variation in an effort to make sure everyone has an opportunity to best care available. Now the value of standards is about flowing data across all of the health system, whether you are in a primary care setting, a hospital setting, or you're in a rural and remote indigenous community in, in, on, on, which doesn't have access to hospital care or specialist care. It's about understanding the unique life journey, the outcomes that are meaningful to each community and the individuals in those communities so that they define best in the context of the life um, circumstances um, they live in. It's about protecting the workforce. I have to say of one of the outcomes in this pandemic, I think we were going to need to pay a lot of attention to is understanding who is our workforce? How do we help them remain, remain healthy and well and ensure they have the quality of work environments that allow them to do the impressive and quite frankly, unbelievable care uh, we see them deliver virtually every day. What's the role of virtual care? Is it to how does it now become a new tool in the toolbox to support and enable self-management, helping communities achieve health and wellness framed and defined from their unique perspectives? Preparedness. Boy, we've learned some pretty important lessons in the pandemic on preparedness. The preparedness for a pandemic, I don't think any of us really quite thought about the scope and scale of what we're seeing today. How does that now teach us about resilience, agility, and preparedness in future and overcoming inequality? This has long been a challenge, but with a digitally enabled ecosystem that now allows our health system teams and leaders to track outcomes and it personalizes those digital tools right to every individual so that they now learn and are enabled to manage their health and wellness and very meaningful connections to their provider teams. That's when we achieve the transformative uh, health system of the future, absolutely informed by the very important work of today's health systems and what digital tools really make possible. With that, I am ever so grateful to have had the chance to speak with you today, share some of these ideas and thinking, and I am absolutely happy to answer uh, questions that are in my um, chat box, I can see already. So with that, uh, for a few more minutes, I think we have, uh, let me see if I can um, respond. Uh, looking forward to shifting towards wellness and digital health rather than simply reactive treatments like the past. It's not that we're replacing, and I want that to be pretty uh, clear. Um, we are building on the expertise and the phenomenal work of today. Those clinical pathways have really been driven by impressive research on demonstrating what works very well. Now is the opportunity to build on those, uh, that excellence in care and now allow and 
create those digital societies, digital environments. So then in future, if there is such an event, and I certainly hope there won't be, then we'll have that meaningful connectivity between the communities, the individuals, how systems serve, to coach and support and enable them uh, to avoid transmission of a virus if that's the scenario it's, um, uh, that's unfolding. Or it may be just tips and tools and, and opportunities to stay uh, healthy and well. Um, let me just see if there are any other questions. Happy to answer them. I'm also very, very happy uh, to respond for those of you who wish to reach out and uh, share your work. Certainly um, would be delighted to um, um, have further conversation. So with that, thank you so much. Uh, I'll close this session so you have a moment to take a breath and move on to the, I think, the closing keynote coming up. I wish you a very healthy, uh, safe um, afternoon, evening, and um, wish you the best as we uh, hopefully see the end uh, of a very challenging pandemic. Thank you so much.